Hello everyone, myself Divyanshi Srivastava, software consultant at Nordas. I am going to present a session on ScalaJS. And in this session, we are going to see how we can write JavaScript code in Scala itself. So moving forward, let me just uh, explain about Nordas in which I am working on. And it's not just about a company and an organization, it's more than that. If we just take a look into it, there are many of the images you can see from here, like Internet of Things, Microservices, AI, DevOps, and many more. So what we actually do in Nordus. Nordus is a team of passionate technologists with a product mindset. We work along with businesses to deliver solution at the speed of competitive advantages. And our main capabilities are around as you can see from here, Internet of Things, Microservices, AI, DevOps, Data Science, and many more. Plus, with these technologies, we have some huge partnerships with, one of, with many of the great partners like Lightpend itself, Confluent, Snowflakes, Databricks, and many more other clients also. So this is all about Nordus. Coming forwards to the agenda of our today's webinar, which is introduction to ScalaJS. Then I will <coughs> show some code comparison between JavaScript and Scala.js. After that, we move to our TypeScript and Scala.js. And then a chart based comparison, which shows what are the features in JavaScript and in TypeScript and in Scala.js, followed by a demo. And then I will let you know about the community support. So moving towards the introduction to what is a Scala.js and you can see from here there are two images one is for the Scala and another one is for the Scala.js so here you can see a simple definition which is provided by the Scala lang itself and it says Scala combines object oriented and functional programming in one concise high level language so as we know Scala is both object oriented and functional plus Scala static type help avoid bugs in complex applications and its JVM and JavaScript runtime let you build high performance system with easy access to huge ecosystem of libraries. So if you just take a look into it, we know Scala from JVM terms. We had <coughs> Scala based applications and many of the famous frameworks and libraries with Scala, like for example, Akka. Park and Lagom, Play, and many more. These all are runs on JVM itself. And now it's time to see it's a, the second part of Scala, which is JavaScript. So you can see from here, as we know, is that JavaScript runtime is in the browser. So we see the code we written in Scala itself are going to run on the browsers, users, client browsers. That's the interesting part about the today's session, writing a whole JavaScript code, running it on the client browser and seeing how the Scala capabilities and functional object oriented and static type, everything works with the JavaScript environment. Moving forward, by Scala.js. So as I have already explained many things about Scala.js, so there are a few points which proves them correctness. Since Scala have a strong types, so there won't be less chances. There won't be, uh, won't be isn't a good word, but I would say there's a less chances that there would be a silly mistakes. And Scala, when we <coughs> code is converted into JavaScript, that is the optimized one. That is the second info important part like performance. We always need performance with JavaScript, with JVM, anything. We need a performance in this high moving world. So performance is when the Scala code is converted to ScalaJS, it's being optimized at that time. So the JavaScript code we get at the end are the optimized ones. Interoperability. So we can use JavaScript libraries 
which are written with JavaScript and uh, working with the Node.js or in the browser itself with the Scala. And we can write the code for the JavaScript using React and Angular in Scala too. So that's the main profit of writing with the Scala. We can have the type safe system to write an Angular application or to write a React application. That's the profit of interoperability. Next is excellent editor support. So, you know, editor IDs are the most important part in development. We never wrote code in the notepad and then run that. So we have an excellent ID support with like, for example, ID communities, IntelliJ idea with the community version. They had an excellent support for the Scala.js. They can check the errors, silly mistakes uh, without even compiling them. They just show us directly that, hey, it is right. There is some error, there is some warning. We can fix that. That's all the benefit with the Scala.js. And there are many more other parts of Scala.js, which we can explore while going on to the webinar. So moving towards the comparison between JavaScript and Scala.js, so you can see the logo of JavaScript and Scala.js. You can find it that Scala is in the center of instead of JavaScript. So here you can see a simple class, one in from the JavaScript, one on the Scala.js, and you can see class person with the constructor first name, last name, and a full name. Method. And on the <coughs> right hand side, you can see the same class in Scala, and you can compare the code number of lines in them, it's being too small for a Scala. Small and concise. So take a look at console.log hello world, and you can say print ln hello world. How, how much easy for a Java developer to say, okay print ln and that would be working with the browser itself too and on the JVM too. So a common code can be shared between JavaScript and JVM code. Moving towards the collections part, the main important topic of uh, any project, any applications is the collections itself. We can see a mapping. We can have the same mapping P dot or even if have on the other hand, a more shorter expression, which is underscore dot first name. So you can see how much similar the const converted to well and everything gets remains the same. The, the, the operator, the map for method, and everything gets the same in Scala and JavaScript. So you can see how much familiar they are. Moving towards the map. You can see a new map and then a small piece of code written with the for expression. And you can see the same with the for and yield. And you, if you just compare it between the Scala and JavaScript, you can see how much cleaner code in the Scala we can write and a more type safe code we can write with Scala. Next, moving towards the next XML HTTP request. And if you just take a look into both of the code to open an XML HTTP request, you can see that they are pretty much similar. On load, on load, status, everything. You can see the exact code is in the Scala, but with more type safety. Here you can see from here, the type safety we required with the Scala. Any, any silly mistake, any error, we can find it out on the compile time itself without moving into the browser session to load and then we get to an silly mistake or such mistakes. <clears throat> Code comparison between TypeScript and Scala.js and by TypeScript. So we can write the JavaScript with the TypeScript too. And it provides uh, some of the type safety to JavaScript and now we can see the difference between TypeScript and Scala.js too, as TypeScript is famous for the JavaScript. Here's the first difference between the same person as we see from the JavaScript to Scala.js. Here you can see that there's a type safe first name and the last name. 
but overall the length of this is greater in TypeScript and less in Scala. You can see it, it's type safe already type safe. We are writing a type safe code. No matter we are writing for JavaScript or for JVM. It's always the type safe. Same console.log, methods, map, persons.map. So this slide is exactly the same with the comparison between the JavaScript and Scala. Next, moving towards the map we used previously, here you can see the map has a type related to it itself in TypeScript and it's always the same code for the Scala.js because we always write a type safe code there. So you can see from here the difference between the TypeScript and Scala.js. Now let's see what are some features which are present in JavaScript, not in Scala.js, not in TypeScript, some which are present in Scala. So you can see from here, if you just take a look into it, we have a difference with JavaScript ES5, JavaScript ES6, TypeScript and Scala.js. If I just take you to the language features, you can see classes. ES5 doesn't support, ES6 supports it, TypeScript supports and Scala.js supports it. Type system are supported by the TypeScript and Scala.js but not by the JavaScript ES6. Then macros are supported by Scala.js, compiler optimization with the Scala.js, libraries, extensive standard libraries are also available with the Scala.js. And with the IDE support, we can catch the errors in IDE. Easily refactor the code. So these were the all chart-based comparison, what was presented with the Scala.js, with TypeScript, with ESX, and with ES5. So you can have a look into it. And let us know if there are any questions on this. Now, the main part, the demo. So moving towards the demo itself. I have this sample project already created up. So let me just go through the build.spt quickly. So I have a root project and then moving towards the build.prot, let me show you some basic configuration. I am using SPT version 1.4.0. Then this is the dependency is colleges DOM. I will explain why we are using this dependency at later point of the demo. Then let me quickly go through the plugins.sbt so to add a scala.js into a project we need to add this plugin this plugins bring the scala.js capability into an sbt project and to make a cross project we can do it manually also but to make a cross project so that we can have the same directory structure like javascript part goes here jvm part goes here and the shared part goes here so we can have it here using this simple <coughs> cross project plugin with, uh, with the Scala.js. So you can see there I have added two project, two plugins. One is for the Scala.js itself and one for the cross project. Cross project means uh, it contains the two parts, basically three parts. One is JavaScript, which is used by the browser. Second one is JVM, which is which runs on JVM itself. Third one is the shared, which is the common code between the JavaScript and the JVM. Let me just go through the build.sbt. So here you can see I have a root project. It's simple common settings and common settings are nothing but a simple project information like project version, Scala version, I'm using 2.13.3, project name and then organization and writing also about the common settings. Then I have this cross project, sbt cross project. <coughs> JS platform for JavaScript, JVM platform for JVM. And then I have the same common project settings here. Then we can separate out the settings via .jvm, via .js. So if I just want some settings to be extensively applicable for JVM only, then I can put it here. With JS only, then I can put it here. And if it is common between both of them, then we can put it here. So that's the capability for this BT cross project plugin. And for this, when we uh, do a compilation, then after that Scala code is coming in the Scala.js and this type base directory refers to where the Scala.js code would be.
generated. So that would be generated inside uh, JavaScript source main sources web and in this folder the JavaScript file would be generated when we compile and run this project. So that's all about the project structure itself, common settings itself, SBT version, dependencies which we are using. I'm, I'm letting you know about this dependency at later stage. And then the plugins, the two plugins, one for the Scala.js itself, we need to add capability for Scala.js and the second one is for the cross project, which helps us to easily create a cross project with JavaScript, JVM and the share. Now let me just quickly go through the project structure. <coughs> so we have a JavaScript folder here which contains the source code for JavaScript. We have a JVM folder here which contains the source code for JVM and we have a shared folder here which contains the shared resources. Now next moving towards the shared first. <coughs> so I have this logger object here which have a simple method info with a println and take a look into this class um, I have a method info which takes a message of any type and then it's gonna print that with comma now this is the same shared class now if, if I just quickly go through the JVM part and then <coughs> if I just go through this main and you can see I just call this method logger.info scala.js template so it will gonna be called this and here from here you can see I didn't have any depends on or anything so that's the Scala.js cross project plugin itself that would do for us. So if I just go and run this that would run on the JVM itself so I had hit run on this and just wait for this to complete. So here's the output is ColorJS template because we use a simple println. So you can see the output of the JVM itself and the shared. Now it's time for the JavaScript. Moving to other JavaScript. So Scala and then <coughs> okay. So I have this simple uh, HTML file here index.html and a CSS file here. So I have some different classes here and this class just simply contains the class name from the CSS. So if you just take a look in it, it's column flex container, full width height, linear gradient design, bottom left. So you can see it's just a simple name. Next, moving towards the next class. So it's just a simple CSS class name, same as Scala. I have just, uh, <coughs> name the class name in the Scala variable for the simplicity and for the demo purpose. Now I have this container event handler and there it contains a handle button click event. If you just take a look into it, it has a body class and if you, if you just see there is a document.query selector and if you remember this is the same code we wrote with the Scala 2. So let me just go through the index.html first. So that's a simple HTML, here's a head, then a body with a div container and then script. Uh, although the script isn't generated, we would gonna be generate this script. But if you just take a look, it contains a simple welcome to Scala.js and then on click handle container button click event. So this function is defined is Scala. Uh, here it is. So the, the same function handle container button click event, handle container button click event, this the, this body is generated, executed. And document.query selector, if you just remember we have a, <coughs> a dependency which is Scala.js DOM. So this dependency is useful to bring the DOM functionality with Scala. So if you just take a look at document.query selector and this document comes from the scala.js.tom package itself. So that's why this dependency is added to bring the DOM features with Scala code. So 
So here you can see document.query selector and then we simply toggle the CSS class and then you can see the logo.info, the same logo.info which we put into the shared folder. Here you can see we used it already in the JVM, now it's time on the JavaScript and we have a shared classes, shared code base across JavaScript and JVM, Scala.js and Scala.jvm. So if you just take a look into it, this particular handle container button event, when we, I'm going to click this button, this piece of code is going to be running and that simply does a body and then change the class, CSS class of that uh, body element and then just print on the console. Next, moving towards the next code, it says that window.onload is equals to onload handler and here you can see the onload handler itself. So when that onload handler method is going to be run, this particular piece of code is going to be run. So what it does, it just simply put an alert into the web browser and then using a query selector, update the CSS of the div element. So the hash container is the idea of the div which we use for the demo purpose and then the same logo.info. So basically here are two functions are called which is handle container button click event and the second one is on load handler. These both functions which we used in the HTML are written in Scala itself and let me just show you how they are converted, what commands we need to run or how can we convert the Scala based code into the JavaScript. So let me just simply put an SPT. Okay, so I guess it would gonna take some time. Here it is. So until this is loaded, let me just explain when I, <coughs> uh, okay, so there it is. Okay, I guess that would be loaded now. Yes. So let me just do a simple clean. Compile. So you can see the code base is compiling itself and if I just hit a projects command you can see there are three projects cross project js and cross project jvm and the root. These were the same three projects which we have in the build.spt root cross project jvm cross project js. To generate a javascript code I just simply need to write the first of js. And that would gonna be generating a JavaScript file into the directory which we specified here. So if you just now take a look into it, it contains a JavaScript file. So let me just delete them and generate them once more. So that's the Java optimized JavaScript file, and you can see it's an optimized version. And now it's time to run this in the here it is. You can see web page loaded successfully. Hey, and uh, if you just take a look into it, the window handler, on load handler, which we wrote the code in the Scala, you can see from here web page loaded successfully. Window dot alert, and then the query selector changes the class CSS. So here you can see web page loaded successfully. Let's just put an inspect phase here and console and you can see from here web page loaded successfully. So the code base we wrote with the Scala are executed into the JavaScript in engine inside the Chrome. Next, on click event. So each time I put a click on it, the linear gradient change, you can see from here, the design changes here. And if you just take a look into it, it's gonna be printing it. So it's continuous printing here. So the same 
handler is written in this color itself you can see document query selector so it just simply select a body and then toggle the css class to change the background of the web page a demo web page so that's the same handler function which is attached to the index.html button so when i just press a on click here then the body of this function is executed so you can see from here the host.js generated a javascript file and this javascript file is we we are talking about in the starting of the presentation let me just quickly go through that slide and if you just take a look into it performance color or just optimize our scala going to highly efficient javascript and if you just take a look into this file scala js the code we write in scala and when we put a simple command fast of js that's command completely converted our scala code into the javascript or js file and that's the optimized one highly optimized one so the performance would be very good with the scala <coughs> generated javascript file and plus you can see from here we have everything with the scala like we have an object we have a type safe system we have everything required with the scala.js so in a high level we can combine the power of all the scala like traits type systems options either try uh, functional paradigm object oriented paradigm everything with all the power of scala we can write the javascript code in a more type safe and that would be converted into javascript file and with the most optimized format so we just need to write a simple code in scala we can have a shared folder which we can use to maintain a code base which is shared between the javascript and jvm and then it's a simple scala base code to write a javascript there yeah. so that's all about the demo of the scala.js means you can see from here the running web page itself let me just click on the index.html once more yep Web page loaded successfully. Let me just open the inspect page here. Console web page loaded successfully. Click me gradient gradient design changed again. Click gradient design changed with the second printing. So this is the demo about the scalar edges. Moving towards the presentation. I hope the demo is clear and up to the mark. Here's the community support. We have the Stack Overflow, Gitter channel for ScalaJS. You can have it directly post a question on them, many of them, and you definitely will get an answer very quickly from the community. So that's, that's the main support of the community because without community, writing a code is really very hard. But if you have the right community, we have if you have the responses quickly, then it's been very easy to understand, to learn, to work on that particular technology to programming language and anything which we have a community, we have developers around the globe to help us on any critical situations, any help us to learn the technology, the language more easily. So that's all the community support. And these are the few references I used for the learning. And these were some good references. To start with the Scala.js and hopefully the session would be a good starting point for the Scala.js too. Thank you and have a great day.